This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So for the past couple months, I've been using the DJI Pocket 3 a lot, and there's a bunch of things that you encounter, and you're kind of like, man, I wish I would have known uh, about some of these things beforehand. So in this video, I just want to go through with you guys a bunch of tips that I've learned after using the Pocket 3 for a little while now. Now note, in this video, I am going to be talking about a few different things that deal with the Creator Combo. Now the Creator Combo comes with things like this, a like DJI mic, well, it comes with one of them, comes with battery packs and things like that. So I am gonna be talking about some accessories in this video, but know that they do come with the Creator Combo or you can buy them separately. I think some of them you can buy them separately, not, not everything just yet. Now being a solo content creator, the one thing I do wanna talk about is having something like this, a portable tripod with you. And with the Creator Combo, you're gonna get, actually with both combos, you are gonna get the mount, the quarter 20 tripod mount for the pocket. So if you're like me and you shoot a lot of videos by yourself but you need a way to get the camera up, this is what I normally will do. I will normally have my mount sitting on a tripod that has an extension pole on it. You can make these out of a lot of different ways. There's a lot of tripods out there. There's a lot of uh, extension poles out there and you can use a quarter 20 at the bottom and kind of make shift your own. I've been using this one right here which is from Ulanzi and it is a considered a light stand but I use it pretty much for my pocket. So what I do is I will normally have my pocket with me and then whenever I want to get a shot of myself at eye level I'll drop this right on top and then I just have to stand this up and then lift this all the way up. And this one goes pretty tall. So I'm able to get the camera nice and high pretty much at my head level. And my goal is when I go to CES next year, this is going to be, there's probably will be my setup. I don't think I'm going to bring a bigger camera. I'm going to see if I can get away with doing the entire convention with this setup right here. DJI Pocket with this little tripod extension pole that goes really tall. Next tip we'll talk about is taking control over your exposure. Now, a lot of people that get the pocket or action cameras, even like myself, a lot of times, I just like to stick it in auto and not worry about it. But a lot of people don't realize that you do have full manual control over the exposure. The only thing you don't have control over is the aperture. That is a fixed aperture, but you do have control over the shutter speed as well as the ISO. Now to access those manual controls, all you have to do is when you're in video mode or actually in photo mode as well, you need to swipe from right to left. So swipe right to left. You'll see a little icon there and a word that says exposure. Click on that. And then now at the very bottom, it says auto and manual. So if I go over to manual, you now have control over the shutter speed. So as you can see here on the left, it's at 1 60th. I can switch that to 1 20th. To change the ISO, you do have that scroll here on the right hand side. So that brings me to my next tip, ND filters. If you are the type to want to have manual control over your exposure, if you can't adjust the aperture, the only way you can pull that exposure down is by changing the shutter speed, the ISO, as well as adding on ND filters. The next tip we'll talk about is clipping your pocket into your adapters. Now, as you can see here, when I put it on my tripod, I just stuck it on there, but you wanna make sure that you hear the two clips. Now, there's actually two clamps here on the side, and when you clip it down, sometimes you will get both, sometimes you might get one, and that's something you don't wanna skip out on. You wanna make sure that both of them are clamped in there because there's been a couple times where I'm using the tripod, I push it down, I hear a click, but I only hear one and sometimes I'll pick up my tripod with the pocket on there and you'll see it's a little bit loose on one side. I hear that one click, but as you can see here, it's actually loose on the other side. There you go, that second click just snapped in. But whenever you're using it, make sure that when you disconnect it, you have both unlatched, especially when you connect them, you wanna hear both. You wanna hear one and two. And before we get into our next tip, a quick word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. And for those that aren't familiar with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members. What makes Skillshare so unique is that it is one of the largest communities for online creatives. And if you guys know, as of a lot more recently, content creators as well as creatives have been in demand. So if you're looking at getting into the creative space, whether it's social media, marketing, design, videography, photography, Skillshare has tons of industry professionals to learn from. And for those that don't know, I'm actually a UI UX designer by day and in my day job I use a software called Figma and most recently I just signed up for Daniel Scott's advanced Figma course hoping to learn a bunch of new techniques from Daniel as well as new animation skills 
through his Figma class. So if you're like me and you wanna learn something new or you just wanna level up one of your existing skills, the great thing about Skillshare is that it is an on-demand platform, which means you could take all of these courses at your own pace. So huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 500 people to use my link down below in the video description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. And now back to the next tip. Next tip we'll talk about is storing your gimbal. So the thing is when you power it off, what's nice is that it'll actually go into a shutdown sequence. And when you put it into something like this, which is the little hard shell for your gimbal, the one thing that I used to do a lot or try to do a lot is you just think you can just push it straight down. But the problem is when you do that, there's actually some slots here. And if you try to push it straight down in here, it normally will do this. You can kind of see that the gimbal sits a little bit upright. So the one thing I like doing is actually putting the camera side in first. So when you push that in first and then you put the handle down, it'll then slide in a little bit easier. And that way you don't risk damaging the camera or the gimbal if you try to just shove it in straight. And there you go, it'll sit nice and flush. The next thing we'll talk about is microphones. Now with the DJI Pocket 3, there's actually three mics on here. There's one right here on the side, one on the other side, as well as one back here. Now being that the Pocket is a still pretty small camera, a lot of times when you hold the camera, you're normally trying to hold it you know, like this, or you're gonna hold it kind of like this sometimes. And what you might not realize is that when you're doing that, you're actually covering up, or you might be covering up these microphones on the sides and the back. So if you are holding your pocket, I like to just kind of pinch it, which means I use my thumb right here on this Osmo pad right here, the little logo on the front. I'll pinch it there with my thumb and then I'll pinch it with my index finger on the back. Next thing we'll talk about is actually locking the gimbal in a particular direction. And this is very common if you've used a larger gimbal, you'll know that they have that trigger. And when you pull that trigger, it'll now keep that gimbal, keep the gimbal locked in a particular direction. Now with the pocket, we don't have that trigger, but what you can do is actually press and hold down the 5D joystick, and that will lock the gimbal in that particular direction. So for instance, if I want to shoot this way, I actually press and hold it. And now even if I turn and I turn left and right, as you can see, the gimbal will stay pointed in that direction. For the next couple tips, we'll talk about this right here, the DJI Mic 2. Uh, the Creator Combo comes with one of these. Uh, I just happen to have a second one that I've been able to use. You can actually hook up two DJI Mic 2s to the Pocket 3 so you can have one on yourself or one on a talent. Uh, multiple ways for you to use two microphone setup. I'm not sure if DJI has released this uh, microphone 2 or mic 2 separately yet for sale. Now one of the mistakes I would make sometimes when I first got this microphone set up in the pocket was I would turn on the mic 2 just like this and then of course I would have the pocket turned on here and I would go out there and shoot with the assumption that it was always synced up properly. Now when you do sync it up for the first time, normally it'll automatically read it, it'll automatically sync, and that's what sometimes I assumed would happen. Uh, but there was a few times where I would power it on and then press this on, turn it on, and then just start recording and not realizing, oh, it didn't actually sync to the pocket. Now if it's not synced up, the one thing you wanna do is swipe down, click on settings. The very first one is wireless mic, click on that one and then you'll see transmitter one, transmitter two. Like I said, you do have the ability to hook up two. So right now I have nothing on my screen, which means there's nothing hooked up to it. Now, if you wanna sync these up, the one thing you wanna do is press on the transmitter one or transmitter two, click on it. It'll then tell you to press and hold that link button here on the side. So once you do that, it says wireless mic is connected. So it does read it and then hit confirm and you can close that out. And now you can actually see that green bar at the very top, which means my audio is now synced up with the microphone. And also if you want that 32-bit float option, make sure that you are also recording here on the transmitter. Make sure that red light is on. If it's not on, press record here. But that way you have a separate recorded track to the transmitter, and this one will have that 32-bit float option. Now a lot of people haven't really talked about this one, but if you do have your mic set up, hooked up right now, it is synced up, it is working. All my volume right here is going through the microphone. But the one thing you can do is say if this is on your talent and you're behind the camera and you were like, how do I hear what the talent is saying through the microphone or through the camera? How do I monitor it? Well, you are able to do that if you get something like this, a standard headphone. Now here I have an Anchor 3.5 audio adapter to USB-C. All you do is plug it into the back 
right here. Now, test one, two, three, test one, two, three. I can actually hear all the audio that comes through the transmitter in my headphones. And you can actually monitor or change the volume of your monitor right here. So I could turn it up. Now it's nice and loud in my headphones and then turn it down here. Now what I am noticing is that there is a slight delay with the audio coming out of this to your headphones. So just know it's not you know real time, real time. There is a tiny bit of a delay. I'd probably say like a quarter of a second delay. And the next thing we'll talk about when it comes down to audio is that a lot of people don't know that you are able to change the gain of the microphones. So you need to go into the more advanced mode and how you get there is actually just swipe across from right to left. And at the very top, when the mic two is hooked up to the pocket, you'll now see a little icon at the very top. You click on that uh, mic two. And then here at the very bottom, you can see transmitter one gain. Press on that. So if you feel like your audio is coming in a little bit too low, you are able to change the gain here on that setting. Next, we'll talk about slow motion, and that's something I like to do a lot, especially when I'm filming my kids or if I'm shooting some B-roll on my products. Some people don't realize that the slow motion is another setting. Now, I know I talked about this in my previous video. I wish DJI would just allow the ability to have 4K 120 in the video setting. Right now, it's capped at 4K 60 because of the fact that there is a slow motion setting on the camera. So if you wanna access slow motion, you're gonna to need to click on the bottom left on the icon, and then you're gonna swipe over to slow motion. Now, when you go into this setting, you are gonna have the ability to have slow motion in 4K, 2.7 and 1080p, but you especially you wanna use that 4K 120. That's the slow motion you'll get at the highest resolution. And the next thing we'll talk about is gimbal speed. And a lot of people don't really realize that you might wanna change your gimbal speed depending on what type of subject matter you are filming. You wanna swipe down from top to bottom and you see that little running man there, click on that guy, and then you can see it's either slow, default, or fast. So if you wanted to get, I would say, some of the more smooth or more cinematic style types of shot, I like to use slow, which means if I'm moving my gimbal and I were to turn, that gimbal has a slower delay of kind of movement. It'll start catching up to it a little bit slower. And, and because of that, if you were to move fast and turn, the gimbal will still kind of smooth that out. Now, if you're following somebody that's a lot quicker, you're tracking a car, you're tracking somebody that's riding a bike, anything that's a little bit faster movement, you're gonna to wanna to move it up to that fast speed, which means if a car is coming by and you're turning, you can see that that gimbal now is reacting a lot faster. If someone's running, you're gonna to wanna to be able to turn and catch up to them. And there it is, you know, just a bunch of tips that I've been able to kind of list as I've been using the Pocket for a little while. And uh, just things that I think that would be very beneficial for new and experienced users. Hopefully you guys found one or two things in here that you might not have known previously. Huge thanks to our sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Make sure you guys check out my links down below for some of the discounts that they are offering my viewers. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. That way you don't miss another one of these videos. This is Alter Sasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.